Kumar, you were of course speaking to Shashi Tharoor a short while back. He is of course asserting confidence that he is going to win once again a fourth term from Tiruvannantapuram. Uh, what's the mood like in the Rajiv Chandrasekhar camp this morning? Okay, the Rajiv Chandrasekhar camp certainly also very, very upbeat and uh, claiming that they are bringing new energy to this entire election. And uh, they, in fact, have a campaign line that suggests that the work will begin now, suggesting as though uh, no work has happened in the last few uh, years, or so the last few terms of the uh, uh, Shashi Tharoor uh, uh, being a uh, member of parliament from Tiruvannantapuram. Of course, uh, the third person in the frame is Panyan uh, uh, Ravindran, who is uh, the CPI candidate from here. But yes, uh, enthusiasm pretty good. Uh, among the voters here, though one of the poll observers uh, at the station in fact said that 25% or 27% till about 11 a.m. is quite low and he would expect it to be a little higher. Otherwise, voting percentage usually has been good in uh, Tiruvannathapuram as well as in Kerala. 73% plus is what it was last time round. First time voter here and also a senior citizen here who is uh, coming to vote. What is your enthusiasm about voting? You are excited, looking forward to it? Yes, looking forward. So did you do any analysis of what the politics is or uh, did you follow what your friends are saying, social media or parents? No, it's my decision. Your own decision. <laughs> okay, their own decision. But the good part is that uh, these uh, young voters are coming out and voting. You have about 2.77 crore voters here, out of which about 5.7 lakh are in fact the first time voters uh, in Kerala. And uh, uh, that is where this state, which is uh, in fact uh, otherwise always tossed between UDF and the LDF, now uh, having a third force to contend with. And some people talking about it as, as the change that they are looking forward for, whereas the critics of the BJP point out that uh, demographically or political history would suggest that the BJP uh, will find it difficult to win a seat here. Uh, the Rajiv Chandrasekhar camp was your question. And uh, just a short while ago, I met a, a leader of the BJP here and he right. showed me a uh, statistic that suggested that 41% of right. the vote share here and 45% of the vote share, he says, according to the poll, is uh, going to go to the BJP. Uh, right. Critics of the BJP are skeptical about that. Back to you. Uma Sudhir there, thank you so much. We'll keep coming back to you for more for the moment. Let's shift focus now to Bengal. And in fact, not just in Bengal, but Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah today once again doubled down on the Congress, specifically with regard to their manifesto, where Prime Minister, while speaking in Malda in Bengal, in fact, said that the Congress manifesto is dividing along religious lines. And in fact, the PM went on to say that inheritance tax is a tool of minority appeasement. Amit Shah also uh, spoke a short while back and said that the Congress manifesto in fact has increased their support base let's take a look at both the reactions sadhyo congress to aapke nahi rehne ke baad aapki sampatti par bhi 55% tax lagane ki yojana bana rahi hai yani aapke jeevan bhar ki kamai aapke baad aapke bete betiyon ko nahi milegi usme se aadhe se zyada कांग्रेस सरकार जब तक कर लेगी और संपत्ति जाएगी कहां कांग्रेस के वोट बैंक के पास कांग्रेस के इस फॉर्मूले को जानने के बाद पूरा देश कह रहा है कांग्रेस के लोग जिंदगी के साथ भी और जिंदगी के बाद भी उसे लोग धर्म के आधार पर बांटने बांटने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं कांग्रेस के घोषणा पत्र आने के बाद भारतीय जनता पार्टी के प्रति लोगों का रुझान और बढ़ा है क्योंकि कांग्रेस ने अपने घोषणा पत्र में एपीसमेंट की उनकी पुरानी आदत को फिर से एक बार रिपीट किया है कांग्रेस के घोषणा पत्र में पर्सनल लॉ को हम आगे बढ़ाएंगे ये बात की है मैं राहुल गांधी जी को पूछना चाहता हूं पर्सनल लॉ को आप आगे बढ़ाएंगे तो क्या ये देश अब सरिया के आधार पर चलेगा Right, let me go across to my colleague Saurabh Gupta, uh, who's joining me from Balur Ghat. Um, Saurabh, the, what Prime Minister said today is not new. He has, in fact, been talking about this in terms of targeting Congress manifesto for the past several days now. But significantly, this comment he made in Malda, which is a border town in Bengal and a sensitive constituency nonetheless. So how do you think it's being interpreted there? 
Well, you know, the choice of constituency also is important in Malda is, of course, uh, uh, has a huge Muslim population as well. And uh, polarization there, of course, helps the BJP largely because if, uh, <coughs> if there is consolidation, uh, then it helps, uh, you know, uh, parties like the BJP. And that is something that obviously, uh, you know, is part of the electoral calculations that any party would do. But beyond that, Malda also, remember, votes in the next phase. And this is something that the BJP wants to play on the minds of voters. Because this is where the BJP has held these seats. And they want to ensure at any cost that these seats come back to the BJP. Though this time around, the Trinamool says that the way the BJP swept North Bengal in 2019, they will not be able to repeat that performance. And that is why you see a specific focus of both Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah, who have been campaigning in these regions a lot. They've really been pushing the campaign in these seats because they really want these seats to repeat the BJP and not necessarily shift to another party if they have to get to whatever targets they've set for themselves. In that context, these comments become important. Now, today, of course, voting is taking place in Balur Ghat. I'm at one of these booths, which is, of course, a very interesting uh, booth because it's also what you call the you know, model polling station. And here, of course, you see there are, uh, you know, it's all decorated in pink. It's also, uh, you know, v- uh, uh, very accessible for persons with disabilities. It's got wheelchair facilities. It's got ramps. And all of those things that are required to make voting a more inclusive process as well. And uh, also manned by women. Uh, So I beg your pardon to use that word. Uh, You know, managed by women rather. And this is something that uh, we're seeing here as far as this polling station is concerned. And therefore, uh, this is uh, where voting is taking place along with Raiganj. Raiganj, again, the Congress has fielded a very strong local candidate mm. in Raiganj. Right. And uh, there, of course, there's a battle between the BJP and the Tinamul. And then you also have Darjeeling, which is voting today. So three seats in total, Darjeeling, Raiganj and Balurghat. Right. Uh, Saurabh Gupta there reporting from Bengal. Thank you so much for joining us. With that, we'll of course keep returning to all our reporters who are getting us the pulse of the people on ground. But let's also bring our experts in now when we talk about phase two of elections. Of course, there are several important states which are in the polling fray today. Kerala and Karnataka, two biggies from the south where all, in fact, in Kerala, all the seats are voting today. 20 Lok Sabha seats voting is underway there. And for Karnataka also, 14 seats have gone into elections today and the key seats all the four constituencies in Bengaluru are also seeing uh, polling today. Uh, Let me turn to Nija Chaudhary first. Uh, She's joining us in the studio. Uh, Nija, in terms of Kerala, you know, this question is of course being asked in terms of how BJP is trying to open their account. Hashi Tharoor made a dig the other day saying that the only account they can open are bank accounts. Mm -hmm. But do you see any sort of surprises coming our way as far as BJP is concerned in Kerala? Kerala, I think the BJP is expected to increase its vote share. Whether it will actually open its account, I don't know. I mean, it would be a big victory if they do. But I think increase in vote share, yes. Uh, The Kerala battle has been very interesting. Last time, 19 out of 20 seats were taken by the Congress. The left parties took only one. This time, the chief minister is going all out to make sure that it increases that tally. And there has been an all-out war between Rahul Gandhi and the CM. Uh, so, will that, you know, attacking each other on CAA, it provoked, I mean, uh, the left has been attacking the CAA, uh, saying the Congress has been silent on it, it provoked Chidambaram to say they will scrap it if they come to power, and so on, going back to emergency rule of Indira Gandhi, and considering that the left parties and the Congress are allies in the India alliance, this visceral kind of fight hmm. has surprised people. But right. I think the left wants to up its tally and that is where they are coming from. So it remains to be seen, of course, Ra- Rahul Gandhi is contesting the Vayanad election. We are also waiting to see after Vayanad is over, hmm. whether his candidature will be announced from Amethi. Right. And but they were waiting for Vayanad to be over. They didn't want to mix the messages right. to the Vayanad voter hmm. that in case he wins Amethi, he may give up mm-hmm. by not. Right. So that's a risk they didn't want to take. Right. But Kerala, very interesting. Right.
Sandeep uh, Shastri, uh, sorry, um, Naresh Kaushik uh, rather who's joining us on the show. Mr. Kaushik, do you think at, as uh, what Nija was referring to, you know, the kind of uh, verbal volley that we saw from the Congress and the left in Kerala, that took everyone by surprise. They were really going at it right till the last uh, point uh, with senior leaders, in fact, being involved. Pinaray Vijayan from one side and Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi from the other side as well, engaging in that kind of uh, uh, tutu meme, so to speak that we saw, is that going to hurt the India bloc in any way in Kerala? I'm not sure because uh, Kerala is a different case and in southern India they have different kind of alliance in Tamil Nadu and Kerala but in north they have different alliance so uh, in, in uh, Kerala they are fighting each other uh, and it's for the uh, left uh, parties it's a kind of do and die situation in Kerala because last time uh, their vote share decreased and they only one uh, could manage to win only one seat. And this time, Congress, while would like to repeat that performance, uh, uh, the left uh, people would like to increase uh, their vote share. And there are some indications that that might happen. But the interesting story is the third player, which is BJP. As uh, Nija has rightly said, it will be a a uh, big victory for BJP if they manage to win any seat. And they are uh, hoping that they may win, uh, you know, maybe one or two seats, although they are, uh, their, their prediction number is higher. But I don't think many people uh, would say that they, they could win, uh, you know, more than one or two seats at the maximum. Mm -hmm. And the same is in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this is the situation for BJP. BJP is obviously going to increase its uh, uh, vote share. It, it already did last time, and right. it uh, remains to be seen how many more voters uh, uh, BJP can get this time. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the focus is now going to turn to north after that because uh, uh, you know the uh, although th today Karnataka half of the seats uh, are being uh, uh, fought and right. uh, that is also quite crucial because the Congress party won the election there. Uh, but I think uh, uh, people would like to know whether. Uh, Priyanka Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi would fight from UP, Amethi and Rai Bareilly. Mm -hmm. And they can't really uh, say at the moment because they don't want to disturb uh, the Wynard voters because uh, they uh, right. sent uh, uh, him to Lok Sabha uh, the, the last time. So, But this time uh, it's likely that uh, uh, both sister and brother may uh, uh, fight uh, from UP. Right. We'll, of course, have to wait and see whether there's a Congress announcement coming out on that aspect or not. But let me bring in my political guests and from the Congress, Sujata, Paul. Uh, let's turn our focus to Karnataka. Congress, of course, uh, got victory in the state in the assembly elections last year. But when it comes to certain key seats, key Lok Sabha seats, Congress has actually, if I'm not wrong, won a seat in Bengaluru for past several years now. As I'm talking about Lok Sabha seats there. Is it going to be any different this time around, you feel? This time, uh, Karnataka is going to be a clean sweep by the Congress party. And the reason is very clear that the prime minister who in 2014 and 2019 made Lok Sabha elections about national issues has had to come down to the basic issues of the people. And he's only talking about the Congress manifesto. No matter how much he tries to malign it, people are not believing it. In fact, he has been our star campaigner for our manifesto. People are downloading it in hordes and reading it because... People want to know uh, if what Prime Minister Modi has said is correct. But when they read it, and the more they read it, they realize that the Congress manifesto has everything that favors the people of the country, their conditions today. Uh, there are uh, clear methods and ways and means of uh, removing poverty, uh, getting past the, uh, the issues of inflation and price rise, a vision to do away with unemployment, give lots and lots of employment. And we don't give figures uh, like uh, two crores. In fact, we've come out with a calendar which says how we will be filling in the 30 lakh 
uh, central government vacancies. So people are looking towards the Congress and they do so want to Paul, are you Karnataka? worried about the caste factor? Sorry to interrupt you there, you know, because caste uh, dynamics have a role to, a bigger role to play here in Karnataka. The Vokalika factor, uh, the fact that the BJP and the JDS are in a tie-up and the JDS has in fact got a huge loyal base um, in terms of the vocal ligas and certain seats which are in the fray this time around in phase two elections. Is that a headache? Uh, not at all. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, JDS is concerned, I don't really uh, give them too much this time because since the last assembly elections, if you see, elections have become almost bipolar. Uh, and when it comes to national elections, it's going to be clearly bipolar between the BJP and the Congress party in Karnataka. Uh, this regional player, which has been jumping ship every election, uh, are, is not going to be trusted by the people of the country. So, uh, you know, th that doesn't really make a difference. People are bothered about what they are getting. Neeti Jain, would you want to respond who? to that? Okay, you've made your point, uh, Sujata. Neeti Jain, would you want to respond to that? The fact that despite the kind of confidence that BJP has shown going into these elections, they have decided to play it a bit safe in Karnataka by getting into an alliance with the JDS. So that's playing safe from BJP's side, but Congress is saying that DK Shiv Kumar also has the kind of uh, heft that maybe an HD Kumaraswamy can pull. Uh, what would you say to that? So I think the BJP has allies in a lot of other states. The people who have decided to work with us, we are allying with that. It's uh, it's nothing new or playing safe in Karnataka. I think the uh, the agenda that we are moving with in our election is the 10 years of work that we have done. And if the Congress party feels that the PM talking about their manifestos and the issues in their manifestos is helping them, then best of luck to them and all my good wishes to them because all we are doing is telling the people about the pointers and the agendas that the Congress party is talking about. Here is a party which is the BJP that is talking about a vision for the country in 2047 and another party is here that is talking about caste, that is talking about promoting the personal law, that is talking about uh, giving out freebies to people. So just for an example, there is uh, Rahul Gandhi who is talking about giving one lakh to every woman. And here is Prime Minister Modi who has already created one crore Lakhpati Didis, but not by giving them money, but by giving them opportunities to earn that money. And they would definitely not stop at just being one lakh. They are going to earn more. Then that is the opportunity that you give to people. You cannot give khatakat khatakat money to anybody unless you create those opportunities. And that is what we have been telling people. If you are happy that we are talking about your manifesto, right. I think it is you who needs to talk about that manifesto and understand what is written in that. I think the Congress itself does not understand what the manifesto says. Okay. All right. I'll let uh, need, uh, Sujata quickly respond to that before I go back to my experts. Yes, yes quickly, Sujata. But simply, uh, when, we are to when we see the Prime Minister talking about 2047 and not elaborating on what he wants, and he starts No, but you're not even talking manifesto. about your own Why manifesto, ma'am, for this election. I don't understand. Uh, so, you know, when we are talking about today, we are talking about the manifesto of the people. It is the uh, manifesto that has come from people. And the Prime Minister is also talking about it. So, you can clearly see which side uh, the weight is more. And the di direct benefit transfer is what the Prime Minister keeps talking about. And here the BJP spokesperson is talking about the opportunities given. The 5 kilo ration are the opportunities that you are given. I'll, 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 I'll respond to that. Uh, yes, getting, uh, quickly, uh, uh, I, I want to go back level. to my other guests as well. Uh, Neeti, quickly respond uh, to that point and then we uh, go back to this. Nature. Yes, this is something that uh, the Congress will not understand. The DBT is given to a certain segment of people. It is not given to everybody yeah, in the country. The, the opportunities... Now, ma'am, ma you are talking in right, between. Let me finish your point, You, 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 started it. you don't have me talking in between. One second, please. Let, please, let, let, please, let, Sujata, please let Neeti finish her point. The farmers are being given... The farmers are being given... Everybody's turn. One second. One second. Let Neeti finish her point, please. Ten seconds. The farmers are being given the direct benefit transfer. The women who are... Who can... The middle class is being given opportunities. And they will grow. Oh, and that is how you bring people out of poverty All and right. give them opportunities to grow. That is All what right. we are doing and that Point is a vision taken. which Congress lacks. Yes, uh, 
All right, point taken. Uh, Ninja, if I can uh, bring you in in this point, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, there's a manifesto <laughs> squabble uh, going on in our, uh, this uh, show as well. The kind of, uh, you know, back and forth that we have seen uh, being led by the Prime Minister and, of course, several other senior leaders of the BJP and the Congress, of course, retorting to it point by point almost on a daily basis. What kind of an impact will it have on not just phase two, but on the remaining phases of elections. Of course, this is only going to get high pitched, more high pitched uh, with every going day. So, how do you, how do you think this is setting everything apart from what we have seen in the first phase of elections and preceding that, and now the kind of verbal arguments we are seeing? See, it's very clear the timing of the prime minister's speech in Bansvara was soon after the first phase of elections was over, and that phase saw a slump in the voting turnout. So, and it seems to have worried the ruling BJP much more than the Congress. Whereas normally what happens is, if the percentage of voting is lower, the ruling, the incumbent party is happier because it's only change that brings people out in large numbers. But it's the re effect has been uh, the reverse. I think it would, but it would also be simplistic to conclude that there is a nervousness in the BJP and because of this nervousness, the Prime Minister is shifting gear. Clearly, the Prime Minister has shifted gear. He's brought the rhetoric back to Hindu-Muslim. And all over North India, this time, people in the first phase were saying it was not a Hindu-Muslim election. And of course, there was dissatisfaction on local issues. Local class, caste alignments had come to the fore. So, that being the case, there wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a Modi wave, but nor is it there an anger against Modi. People would say, I'm unhappy about this, 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 but I'm, I'm going to vote for the BJP, or who's there to vote for? And therefore, should I vote for Monota, or should I sit at home? You know, this kind of talk was there. So, I think uh, that, that the Prime Minister has now pitched it to the old tried and tested method and pitched it very high. It's not some BJP leader who's done it. It's the top of the BJP and he's not done it one off in Banswara. Every day meeting almost. after meeting, mm. day after day, mm. he is uh, creating that. And what is it? He's saying your Mangal Sutras will be taken over. They are talking about redistribution of wealth. And in that redistribution, it's going to be given to the Muslims. So, it's OBC reservation in Karnataka, that OBC quota is being given to the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, uh, clearly, there is a pattern in this. Is it only to maximize their gains? Of course, clearly, there is worry also. Mm -hmm. And the BJP is a party that doesn't sit back. Even mm -hmm. if the moment they get feedback, they will put some cost correction. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is the, this is the cost correction that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing for me is, you know, 25% voter turnout at 11 o'clock. What was it last time in the first phase at 11 o'clock? We don't remember. Mm -hmm. Does it I mean it's it dropped up. or is it increased a little bit? I'll try and see if I Number have that Number two, what is the impact that the Prime Minister's rhetoric of the last days is having at the ground level? Mm -hmm. Is it having an impact? I could see Malda meeting. There was a lot of, you know, uh, people responding. The recent meetings have not been, you know, people have sat very quietly and listened. Right. So this was what, you know, there are what I call the it dead was crowd. More or less the, the same, crowds. sorry, 25.6, so, around uh, 11 a.m. So last almost the same, yeah. almost the same as last time. So yeah. let us see the impact right. that the Prime Minister's new rhetoric and shift of gear has on the voter in the coming phases. Right. I'll, I'll take a response from Mr. Naresh Kaushik uh, on this same point before I go back to my reporters on the ground. Yes, Mr. Kaushik, uh, please uh, tell us what do you think about this, uh, you know, the manifesto war that we are seeing, what kind of an impact? Is the opposition being able to deal with the volley which is coming from the BJP side almost on a daily basis uh, in this very crucial juncture of the elections? What I see is a division between uh, uh, le uh, left and right, uh, which we see in the West. Uh, so, so we have a, a right-wing party and a left-wing party. Right-wing party has become more right-wing and left-wing party is uh, showing its uh, more socialist character uh, with the uh, promises of handouts. Uh, 
And in the same manner, uh, uh, you, you see in the West, they talk about church, they talk about, uh, uh, temp, uh, 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 you, you know, they, they talk about uh, yeah. the Christian community, they, they talk about the, the business people. Uh, in the same manner, uh, you, we have uh, the BJP leadership is talking about the same. They're talking about the Hindu Muslim issue there. They're talking about Hindus in the same manner as in the West, we talk about Christians, uh, the right wing leaders, and uh, we are talking about redistribution of wealth, uh, because uh, I can see in, in the Brit in Britain, for instance, uh, right. Tory party, uh, which is the governing party uh, at the moment, uh, they, they have been uh, saying that they'll, uh, uh, they'll abolish uh, the, uh, uh, you know, this inheritance tax. And in, in India, this tax was abolished in 1985. And now, uh, but Congress Party uh, has spoken about that in the past as well. Mr. Chidambaram has spoken about it. So uh, Mr. Modi is trying to address this uh, uh, middle class constituency. Right. Uh, and, and basically, you know, the, the people who are going to vote mm -hmm. for BJP are going to vote for BJP. People who are going to vote for the India Alliance, they are going to vote right, for Mr. that. Koshik. It is the fringe element. Uh, which they are addressing and trying to... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you there, Mr. Koshik, but I'll have to go across to my uh, colleague Vedant, who is joining us from Noida with the India Bloc candidate Mahindra Nagar. Yes, Vedant. That's right, uh, Tornima. In fact, you know, Noida is as much about the rural constituencies as it is about the urban constituencies. And here you can see I'm in one of the interior villages of Noida here and people have gathered here, come out to vote. I have with me the India Bloc candidate. Remember, the SP and the Congress have jointly fielded Dr. Mahendra Singh Nagar. It's a battle of doctors here in Gautam Buddh Nagar. Dr. Nagar, first of all, tell me what are the most important voters today? Most important voters are किसानों के मुद्दे हैं, बेरोजगारी का मुद्दा है, फ्लैट ओनर्स के मुद्दे हैं, महिलाओं के मुद्दे हैं, ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का मुद्दा है, इस तरह की ये चीजें हैं और बेरोजगारी तो है ही अब सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा, इन्हीं मुद्दों पर चुनाव लड़े, इसी मुद्दों पे वोटिंग हो रही है, और वोटिंग बड़ी अच्छी वोटिंग परसेंटेज की आपने बात करी अभी अभी इस बार तो थोड़ा अच्छा परसेंटेज अभी दिख रहा है लगभग 25 के करीब वोटिंग परसेंटेज है यहाँ पर नोएडा में लेकिन कम वोटिंग परसेंटेज आपको क्या लगता है ये आपको एडवांटेज है कि बीजेपी वालों को एडवांटेज है कम वोटिंग होने का मतलब होता है कि बीजेपी डाउन जाती है और बाकी गठबंधन ऊपर जाएगा अच्छा हालांकि ये सब तो देखिए थियोरीज है कोई इसमें कह नहीं सकता की क्या होता है क्योंकि लेकिन जो वोटिंग परसेंटेज है गाँव में ठीक चल रहा है नोएडा में कम है अच्छा जो हमने पता किया आपको देखने को मिला हमें पता किया हमने तो वहाँ कम है लेकिन गाँव में वहाँ भी जो गाँव में उनमें अच्छी वोटिंग है जो हाई राइज बिल्डिंग है उनमें कम है उनमें कम है एक तो तीन दिन की छुट्टी आ गई मुझे ऐसा लगता है अच्छा और एक बात ये बताइए यहाँ से जो बीजेपी के कैंडिडेट है महेश शर्मा हमने सुबह उनसे भी बातचीत करी थी वो तीसरा टर्म यहाँ से काफी स्ट्रॉन्ग कैंडिडेट है पिछले दो बार से काफी बड़े मार्जिन से जीतता है आपको लगता है इस बार आपका गठबंधन काम करेगा बड़े मार्जिन से जीता है लेकिन वो गए तो कहीं नहीं गांव में कहीं नहीं गए कस्बे में कहीं नहीं गए मैं तो घूमा हूँ लोग कह रहे वो आदमी ने दस साल से हमने उनकी शक्ल नहीं देखी जो गांव गोद ले रखे उनमें कुछ नहीं करा उनके खिलाफ उनके खिलाफ तो बहुत ज्यादा आक्रोश है ठीक है अच्छा आखिरी सवाल ये बताइए की आज वोटर्स को क्या अपील है आपकी सिर्फ गाँव के वोटर्स को इन्हें जितने भी आपको वोटर्स देख रहे हैं अर्बन एरिया के भी हाई राइजेस के जो लोग अभी भी पांच घंटे बाकी है क्या अपील करेंगे आप मैं सबसे ये अपील करूंगा कि एक तो वोट का राइट इस्तेमाल करें वोट जरूर दें इस देश के वोट जरूर हाँ जरूर दें और वोट देने से पहले देखें कि संविधान और लोकतंत्र को हमें बचाना है ठीक है उसे बचाने के लिए आप वोट जरूर दें देश क्षेत्र के विकास के लिए रोजगार के लिए किसानों की समस्या के लिए उनको ये रजीम बदलना बहुत जरूरी है थैंक यू सो मच दैट वॉज डॉक्टर महेंद्र सिंह नागर ऑफकोर्स हाई स्टेक्स बैटल हियर इन नोएडा टू स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन इन द फ्रे एंड एज ही सेड वोटर परसेंटेज लेसर यू नो कंपेरिटिवली इन हाई राइज बिल्डिंग बिकॉज दे लॉन्च अ पोल बॉयकॉट राइट अड ऑफ द इलेक्शन सेंग दैट टिल द टाइम द हाउस आर रजिस्टर्ड दे विल नॉट बी कास्टिंग देर वोट्स Vedant there reporting from Noida. Thanks so much for joining us. I also want to thank my guests for joining us on the show at this point. Nija Chaudhary, Naresh Kaushik, Sujatha Paul, Neeti Jain. Thank you so much for joining us and shedding very important light on the key aspects of second phase of elections. Let me also continue with our focus on reporters on the ground there. I'm joined by Ratnadeep who is joining us from Ahadguri in uh, 
Nagao district at this point in time. Uh, Ratnadeep, what's been the voter turnout like? It's almost noon and we've seen high voter turnout in the first phase of elections from most of the northeast uh, constituencies which went into polling on phase one. How's it like in phase two so far? Well, in phase two, uh, till noon, uh, what uh, till 11 a.m. already 28 percent polling uh, has been registered. So, therefore, uh, the turnout is expected to be high. And one of the reason of high turnout is the participation of women. If I can ask my camera person Nakul Rabha to show now in this queue, you can only see women here. Uh, they have been right from the morning, from five o'clock. We have seen they were they came out of their homes in large number carrying umbrellas because this time you know uh, the uh, heat wave has catched up even in northeast uh, the uh, temperatures are at least uh, three to five degrees uh, higher than normal but their their participation is huge in fact this has been not only the scene in this hot seat Nogao uh, the only seat among the seven seats uh, which are going to polls from in northeast which is with the Congress where uh, you have a tough fight for the sitting Congress uh, MP Pradut Bordoloi uh, who is up against uh, Suresh Bora who was still few months back with the Congress but now is a uh, BJP candidate and also AIUDF uh, MLA Aminul Islam but uh, also talking about about the other seats we are hearing of high turnout in East uh, Tripura tribal reserve seat we have those visuals I hope our producers will pr uh, package those visuals and those bites and play out for our viewers excellent visuals and bites from Tripura coming in also in outer Manipur which has voted uh, in two phases remember part of it uh, has voted uh, in phase one another part uh, particularly the part which is closer uh, to the Myanmar border uh, voting today there also voting has been peaceful the turnout is uh, uh, good that's what we are uh, hearing so therefore uh, across northeast the five seats in uh, uh, Assam and the two other seat one in Tripura one in Manipur uh, you know the turnout is expected to, to be high another factor is uh, apart from the par huge participation of women is the factor that among the five seats which have gone to polls in Assam uh, you have four seats where your uh, percentage of Muslim voters is more than 40 percent and in fact, that is where uh, perhaps uh, the BJP, which is holding on to uh, f you know, four of those five seats, they have tried to uh, reach out this time in the campaign. And whether uh, the uh, you know, participation of Muslims uh, in the rallies of BJP turns into votes or not would be something uh, that one has to watch out for. Because if that happens, then uh, that might further erode uh, mm -hmm. the Congress's vote bank, right. particularly in seats like Nogao, in seats like... Uh, Karim Ganj, where there is a tough fight, and also the prestigious seat of Silchar, right. where there is a triangular fight. And there the fight is largely between the BJP and the TMC. So outside Bengal, Silchar is one seat which is voting today, where the TMC is trying to put up a fight against the BJP. So, uh, you know, these women behind me, perhaps, again, goes to show this, that there is a large turnout, and they are a big reason they have turned out in large numbers today and perhaps uh, right somewhere uh, they will decide which way uh, the results would go right women voters are of course have traditionally been the x factor in bengal as well as in several states of the northeast there ratnadeep thank you so much for joining us with that at this point in time we'll slip into a short break but more election coverage on the other side stay tuned